time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready, we're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning, this is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my father, Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious February weekend? You know, Ryan, I have to keep checking the weather. Every time I look out, it swings 70 degrees. Man, oh man, Bob. <laughs> it's a tough life down there in Florida because uh, it's not as nice here in the city, I can tell you that. Well, I'm in the city this week, and uh, so warm it up for me a little bit, would you please? I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can All do. Right. <clears throat> You're the man. Well, you I are the man. That's the truest words you've ever said, Bob. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we have a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about universal retirement truths. There are certain retirement principles we all need to apply to have a successful retirement. Bob and I are going to break down some of the most important principles of retirement. We're going to talk about taking care of the family. When you lose a spouse, there's a lot of things you need to consider. Bob and I are going to give you a baseline for all the important things you have to think about to protect your spouse in retirement, along with this week's financial propaganda where we call out the worst advice the financial media has recently been broadcasting. And we're going to have on our colleague, certified financial planner, Courtney Dominguez, where we review a real financial plan and we break it down for you. So let's hop to it. So Bob, there are certain retirement planning principles that apply to everyone, regardless of who you are, how much money you have, and when you're retiring, and where you live And the first one I always think about when it comes to retirement planning is everybody needs an income plan. You know, Ryan, no truer words are ever spoken because life has a spending plan for you. Everything you do costs money. Your bills come in whether you like it or not. So if you don't have an income plan to meet those bills, you are in big trouble. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a very basic thing, right? I mean, bottom line is you want to retire. When you retire, the paycheck stops coming in. Hopefully, you turn on your Social Security at some point. If you're really lucky, you have a pension as well, Bob. Maybe you have some other rental income and other things. But invariably, there's going to be a gap between the income coming in and what you need to spend. And that's when you have to start looking at your portfolio and start thinking about ways that you can derive that income to replace the income that you're not going to have from working anymore. And that's that little gremlin that's in everybody's plan. It's that hidden insidious tax called inflation. So your bills are going to go up your cost of living is going to go up, utilities are going to go up, real estate taxes are going to go up. You need to have an income plan where you're adjusting for inflation. That's a really good point because I had someone say to me the other day, well, I need 100,000 in retirement. My portfolio is going to reel off 80,000 and I have 20,000 coming in social security. I'm set. Ah, And I'm saying, no, you're not. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All we have to do is sit down and and run a projection, you know, using our, our tools and it shows that that 100000 is only 50000 in 20 years. Exactly right. And that's the biggest problem with retirement planning is you have to account for spending a lot more money because every 20 years or so, the cost of living is going to double. So to your point, Bob, right, that 100000 you need is going to, you're going to need $200,000 said another way in 20 years. So you really need to plan for that. Another big issue you need to plan for in retirement is going to be everyone needs to cover some sort of long-term care because we don't know what our medical expenses are going to look like in retirement. You know, the main point of that, Rye, is that if you look at life expectancies, you know, it just everybody's living longer, right? If you tell someone, married couple, you tell mom and I, you know, we're 65 years old that, you know, we can expect to live to, you know, 84, 85, but there's a one in four chance that one of us is going to live past 95, that changes the whole conversation. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And that's why, you know, we get this question a lot. And you might be thinking about this. If do I need to get a long-term care policy? The premiums are very, very expensive, especially if you wait until your 60s, let's say, where the premiums really start to go up. Does it make a lot of sense? Or are you better off what we call self-insuring? And when we say self-insure, Bob, we talked about this a little bit last week. That means could your portfolio take a hit of like, let's say a quarter of a million dollars because of medical or long-term care costs you're going to have in retirement. And does that affect 
the amount that you can draw from your portfolio on an annual basis. Of course it does. And then you have to factor in the volatility of the markets. I mean, the whole thing is why leave it to chance? If you do proper planning, you know, you can make these projections and you can make accommodations, right? You can decide what's most important now. It's not easier to make those decisions now than when you're 75 and, and being told you have to go back to work or move out of your home. Yeah, I think if the idea is when you build a retirement plan, you want to throw the kitchen sink at it, right? You want to look at what we call worst case scenarios. So that means you got to factor in inflation. Things are going to cost more. You have to factor in taxes, which are a bummer. <laughs> sure. um, and then you have to factor in those medical and long-term care costs, which are going to be one of the biggest enemies of retirees today, to your point, because of longevity, Bob. You know, our, your parents didn't have that same issue. They didn't have to worry about living as long as this generation is going to live. You know, that's such a great point, Rod. Let's take taxes, right? The governor of New York, Cuomo, just came out and said there's a $2 billion shortfall in tax collection already. Uh, what do you think the state's going to do? Cut spending or increase your taxes? I'm going to take a wild guess on this one, Bob. I have a feeling my taxes are actually going to go up. So that's the thing. You, know, you have to plan on the worst case scenario, right? You have to project the worst case scenario. That way, no matter what comes at you, you're prepared. Yeah, and going back to the same thing, longevity, inflation, healthcare costs. The other thing you have to be really worried about is how much money you're sitting on in cash right now. You know, I met with a client the other day and he said to me, man, I've got over a million dollars sitting in this high yielding money market fund at two and a half percent. And he happens to be in a high tax bracket. I'm like, well, after you pay taxes on that money, you're actually getting roughly around 1.3%. And inflation's been about 2%. So he's actually losing money against purchasing power, which can be a really, really dangerous place to be when you're trying to grow your money for all these important issues in retirement. You know, what's great about the past, Rye, is, is when you're predicting the future, the future often repeats, doesn't always repeat, but it often rhymes. So you're able to really model out based on the next 20 years, what happened in the previous 20 years. So you can have a really good idea of what your portfolio is going to look like, what the after-tax returns are going to be. And that's the whole thing. Why sit there and wonder when you can know, right? Why not have a plan where you update it every year and know what's going to happen? Yeah. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need this kind of plan. I need to throw the kitchen sink at my retirement plan and make sure it's on track. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan. And we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic financial review where we look at the whole picture. All you need to do is bring in your statements, print them off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to build you your own personalized financial portal to get a bird's eye view of your entire financial picture. And we're going to analyze it for all the critical components. We're going to look at things like fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio you don't know you're paying. Bob and I are going to show you where all the hidden costs are and show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. We're going to look at income. What's your income gap going to look like in retirement? How are you going to replenish it? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio to fill in that income gap. And we're going to look at diversification. Did you get hit really hard when the market went down in December? Were you protected? We're going to show you how to safeguard and bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. And we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now our family's worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of our next 10 callers and you've saved over 200000 for retirement, our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There won't be a plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Rye, and we're the Paynes of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Hey, good morning. This is Bob Payne, the Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management. And the market's remarkable surge in global equity slowed this week 
as concerns of a global slowdown resurfaced in the minds of investors. And also on comments from the normally upbeat White House economic advisor, Larry Kudlow, who expressed some unusual pessimism regarding the U.S.-China trade talks that surprised investors. At least this is what the pundits are saying. See, I believe the news doesn't make the market. It's the market that makes the news. And historically, after a significant January rally, stocks tend to correct or reverse course in the following February. Now, speaking of January, we hit the January indicator trifecta. We are three for three. The S&P was up for the first five days of the month. It was up the first week of January, and it was up for the whole month of January. Now, since 1950, the market has been up 27 of the past 30 times when this has occurred, with an average gain of 17.1%. Now, additionally, 2019 is a pre-election year, historically the best of the four-year election cycle. Pre-election years, or simply the third year of the current president's term, have experienced average gains of 16%, and the NASDAQ returns have been much higher. More importantly, historically, the market has gained an average of 47% from the midterm low to the pre-election year high. Now, the midterm low was hit on Christmas Eve at 21,792. So a 47% gain from there equates to 32,000 on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now, of course, these are historical numbers, and this time could be different. But as famous investor Sir John Templeton once said, the four most dangerous words in investing is it's different this time. Now, if you're sitting here wondering, do I have a portfolio that's appropriate to my risk tolerance? Do I have a portfolio that's benefiting from this big booming bull market? Why sit there and wonder when you could know? Give us a call or simply text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know in the winter of 1780, it was so cold that the New York Harbor froze over? You could have walked from Manhattan to Staten Island on the ice. Let's hope it doesn't get that cold ever again. Although, if you had some sled dogs, it could do wonders for the commute. Anyway, keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. Mush! It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to make sure that you have the most common sense, practical advice you can use for your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest guide, highlights from the new tax law, just to get you up to speed with the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. Text the word bullish to 555-888. What you need to know about the new tax law Get up to speed with the new tax reform. Taxes are around the corner. You can download our guide for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. So, Bob, we work with a lot of people that have lost their spouse and want to make sure that they're in good shape financially. This is something we see probably, it's probably more common than not. And we find there's a lot of problems that you tend to face when you're the surviving spouse And there's a lot of things you can do proactively to make it less burdensome for your spouse when this actually does happen. No, Rod, that's why I say financial planning is about the love of family and country. If you love your family, you do proper financial planning. If you love your country, you don't do any planning and all your money goes to the IRS. (laughs) I prefer a love of family over a love of country in that scenario. Yeah, and it's, it's so simple to make sure that these things are done ahead of time. And again, you don't want to be faced with it once your spouse passes away. And last I checked, nobody gets off this mortal coil alive, right? So you need to do that type of planning. Like, for example, talked about pensions. What do you need to do with a pension? Yeah, no, this is where planning is really critical because a lot of times if you have the opportunity to take a pension or even Social Security for that matter, you have options for giving your spouse a survivor benefit, right? So sometimes you can take less so that your spouse is able to get a benefit when you're not on God's green earth. So trying to and figure out those lot, things. Right? I see this a lot in second marriages and people getting married later in life. When you're living on your own, the only person you worry about is yourself. Once you get married, you don't think about that pension benefit. And if you don't change it to a spousal benefit, guess what she gets or he gets when you pass away? 0.0, Bob. That's a bad deal, right? In any book. Yeah, no, it really is. So it's not, you know, we talk a lot about having an income plan. 
and that's great. But what you really want to have is not just an income plan for yourself, but you want to have a contingent income plan that says when you're not on God's green earth, does your spouse have an income plan in place too? And the time to do that's now. It's not when you're not on God's green earth and all of a sudden you have your spouse who's probably at that point grieving, trying to pick up the pieces and trying to figure out how he or she is going to drive an income. That's a real problem. You know, Ry, the place where people leave the most money on the table is when it comes to Social Security. Right? Yes. Everybody thinks, I retire, I get a check. Eh, what's so bad? Right? There's what, 187 different iterations of how you can take Social Security? Yeah, and all of it revolves around not only how much money you're going to get, but how much you can maximize for your spouse. And depending on your ages, depending on if there's an age gap between the two of you, and depending on when you stop working, you really need to customize and think about what's the best way not only to maximize the benefit for yourself, but for you and your spouse over both of your lifetimes. Yeah, and it's not just about a disparity in age. It could be a disparity in income, right? I mean, hey, let's face it. Your mom was a great homemaker. You know, She didn't make a lot of money as a homemaker. But because of the, of the way Social Security is structured, she's going to get half of my benefit when we take Social Security. That's a lot of money. Unless someone like you, an expert that knows about these things, people just leave that money on the table. And again, do you love your family or do you love your country? <laughs> family first, Bob. Family um, first, I say. Yeah, no, no. It, it's a really good point. And I think this is the other reason why we're big fans of our 360 financial portal. Because the other big problem is knowing where everything is and having passwords for everything. Because you may know the Mm -hmm. passwords to all your accounts, easy to get in, and how many times have we seen it where a spouse has passed away, and now the grieving spouse has no idea how to get access to anything. So if you have like one portal where everything's been loaded, everything from all your financial accounts, but more importantly, Bob, even your, well, just as important, your estate docs as well, can make life so much easier for your spouse when you're not here anymore. You know what it really comes down to, right? Everybody's situation is complex, but the solution is simple. And you just need to see it all in one picture and have an expert review it so you know exactly what steps to take. Yes, being proactive versus proverbially being reactive is, is the key here. Bob, another thing that gets overlooked a lot when you're thinking about leaving money to your heirs, to your spouse, and then beyond your spouse is just making sure that you have everything labeled correctly. Because the other thing is you may have lots of retirement plans out there. You may have oh, lots yeah. of different accounts and you forget that the will doesn't cover your retirement accounts, meaning those retirement accounts have to be set up correctly to make sure that your heirs get that money correctly. And I see this uh, more than ever. There's such a proliferation of people changing jobs. They have 401ks in different places, IRAs in different places. And a lot of times people just go up online and they're always in a hurry. Everybody's busy, especially when it comes to finance. It's boring. You know, they get the account set up and then they don't get to the beneficiary information and say, I'll get to it later. And unfortunately, later comes after they're well gone. And this is why I think the first step, Bob, to just getting a real financial plan in place is tallying everything up. And that's why, again, I love that 360 portal, is it's a Mm -hmm. great place just to tally up everything you have. You want to know where everything is. You can put it in one place and you can view it in one place. Then you can start making decisions about everything and the way it's laid out for your heirs, for your spouse, your income plan. All of it comes from first just figuring out where the heck everything is and looking at it in one place. You know, Ryan, that's always the number one thing to consider is what happens with the remaining spouse after the first spouse passes. But then again, you got to start focusing on the children. You know, what happens to the estate? You know, why burden your kids and grandkids with a ticking tax time bomb? Yes, that's why tax planning for your retirement accounts is so critical, Bob. Because the bottom line is at 70 and a half, you have to start taking money out of your retirement accounts. And if it's a lot of money, you're going to have to take a lot of money out. And guess what? Uncle Sam wants their taxes at that time. And there's a lot of ways to structure things. You're not paying a huge tax burden once you hit 70 and a half. You know, Rod, there's so many things you can do. You could do a Roth conversion before that happens, where you have an account that grows tax-free forever. I don't know about you, but tax-free forever sounds like a really good deal. I like that a lot, Bob. (laughs) Okay. So, you know, if you're thinking to yourself, I love my country and I love my family, but I just might love my family a little bit more. Well, here's your opportunity. If you're one of our next few callers and you've saved at least 200000 for retirement, our firm will create for you your own total financial master plan, which will answer those questions. Is your spouse in good shape if something happens to you? Is your family going to inherit a ticking time bomb? If you're thinking to yourself, you know what? I need to be financially healthy. I need to know what I own in my portfolio is not only appropriate, but is it titled properly? 
Am I being overcharged? Am I paying too much in fees? I need to know, am I in a position to succeed? Well, all you have to do is call because we'll create for you a full holistic review where we'll look at everything. It's the only review you'll ever need. We'll gather all your statements, stick them in a shopping bag, put them in a folder, you know, pick up the phone and call us, set up an appointment because we're going to sit down with you and review everything you own and build your own personal 360 financial portal that will allow you to review your net worth in real time, not just your portfolio value, but everything you own. And more importantly, list your goals and your dreams and track your progress towards those goals. We're going to take your portfolio and break it down to the three key elements of a successful strategy. We want to be certain that you're diversified. So there's no hidden risk. There's no ticking time bomb in that portfolio, which will blow up your portfolio in retirement. We're going to look at cost. You know, I hate to be overcharged. I know that I don't want to be overcharged by my own investments, and I'm sure you don't as well. We're going to look for any hidden costs, reveal them, eliminate them, and put you on a path to financial independence. And lastly, income. We all need to fill that income gap in retirement. And you know what? You know what the number one goal is of being retired? Stay retired. You want to be certain you have that dependable, repeatable income stream that grows net of inflation and taxation. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan that will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. If you have over $200,000 safe for retirement and you're one of the next 10 callers, give us a call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844 844- 752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion to make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no game, Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where we scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, what did you find out there this week in the horrendous world of financial propaganda? Well, according to Goldman Sachs, Rye, if you missed January's move in the market, well, you're out of luck for the year. Wow, that's a bummer. I guess I'll just put my money, uh, I don't know, into uh, go to Atlantic City with my money then. Well, you know, according to Motley Fool, you probably should put it in a marijuana stock because that's the place to be right now. <laughs> well, I mean, I think those weed stocks have had a tremendous run, but uh, I would have to say they're probably a little overvalued here, Bob, based on the fact that a lot of these companies make no money. You know, it's uh, they have projected earnings of nothing. Um, so they're selling it about 257 <laughs> times, very little earnings. It's very reminiscent of what happened with the uh, dot-com bubble, right? People expected uh, everything that was in that area to go up. And uh, that's kind of what financial propaganda is about, right? Telling you not to invest in a diversified portfolio, but to time the market, which doesn't work, and to speculate in something that's untried and untrue, but sounds good. Well, let's take a step back here. So Goldman Sachs at the beginning of the year was pretty negative on the market, right? They pretty much thought that the market wasn't going to go up at all. And then all of a sudden, January came around and January was a magnificent month in the market. Well, they said that the market would probably go up single digits this year. And since it went up single digit in one month, they figured, hey, we're right. (laughs) That's right. Well, if it keeps going up, then all their projections are completely wrong for the year. And I thought Goldman Sachs knew everything, Bob. I'm confused. Well, if they did, they wouldn't be in court right now with the federal government, but that's a whole nother story. And you know what? I don't want to pick on them. It's all strategists are the same way. Every strategist that thought the market would return 6 to 10% this year after the January ended moved it to 10 to 20%. You know, you can't predict things that are unpredictable, right? You can't know what's unknowable. And again, investing is about collecting dividends. It's about getting rich slowly 
It's about total return. It's not about buying low and selling high on a monthly basis for sure. Yeah, and that's a good point. What we forget is we always think about we want the market to go up so we become richer or more wealthy because we buy stocks. But the reality of it is 45% of your return is from dividends, Bob. And if you look at the statistics this year, dividends are supposed to go up by like 8%. So, you know, right now we have stocks that are a rising cash flow investment. And what's more important than having dividends or cash flow or income in retirement? Well, especially when you have a low interest rate environment. You know, the 10 year treasury bond is yielding under 2.7%. So you can buy a portfolio of stocks that are yielding between 2 and 3% and have had a history of going up. In other words, increasing that dividend every year for the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years and the chance for appreciation. So to me, you need a balanced approach, but you don't want to have all or none, right, Right. You can't have all in bonds or all in stocks. You got to have a balanced portfolio. Yeah, you really do. And that's, that's a good point because if you buy a 10-year treasury bond right now, you're getting that 2.7% every year. It doesn't change. Now, and again, if you're, if you're planning for retirement, we talked about this earlier on the, in the show, you have to account for inflation. Your cost of living is going up. Meanwhile, you're getting the same amount of income from that treasury bond. That's a real problem. Well, you know, if you don't like the United States, you can always get two tenths of one percent by buying an international bond like Germany or Japan. Oh man, it's abysmal. But I think it's a good thing to remind ourselves. You know, a lot of times we forget that stocks are a lot like real estate, right? People like to invest in real estate because they generate cash flow. Well, we forget stocks generate cash flow too, and that cash flow goes up over time. So another reason why we are kind of against financial propaganda, Bob, is it's all about what direction the market's going in. It doesn't talk about the magnificent cash flow that stocks can generate to help you to retire. Yeah, right. So that's, uh, that's one thing we don't want to do. We don't want to time the market. We don't want to speculate in marijuana stocks. What else did you find <laughs> out there in the world of financial propaganda? I'm selling my weed stocks now, Bob. Um, <laughs> another interesting point that I found actually in Barron's this week, which is, I guess, more like anti-financial propaganda, is if you look at last year, Bob, large cap equity mutual funds lost an average of 6.3%. But to add insult to injury, and we've talked about this a lot, not only did you lose 6.3% being in a large cap US mutual fund, well, they also distributed a capital gain, Bob, of 10.6% of its net asset value. Hold on, Brian, you're losing me here. You lost 6%, <laughs> okay. but you got to pay taxes on a 10% gain. Now, that sounds like financial alchemy. Yeah, that's what we call I like financial alchemy. Right, exactly. So this is one of the problems with mutual funds, Bob, and this is why you and I are big proponents of not owning mutual funds, is because every year, no matter what they do, they have to pay out their capital gains. So a year like last year, even though you lost money, you're still paying taxes. Like, What's up with that? So basically what you're telling me is they buy a portfolio of stocks, they sell their winners, and then the losers overwhelm the winners. So you end up with a loss and then you got to pay tax on the winners that were sold, even though you have a loss on your portfolio. That's right. And this article actually did some research and it figured, okay, so an average expense ratio on a mutual fund is 1.25%, which is you know relatively expensive if you think about it. Above mm -hmm. and beyond that, it estimates that you're paying another 2.5% a year in taxes just because they pay out their capital gains. So you figure you're paying about 3.5% a year, Bob, on a mutual fund between the fees that they charge and then the taxes you unnecessarily pay because they're paying out those capital gains every year, if that makes sense. So you got a, a lower return, higher cost, more taxes, and then you have research that proves that none of these money managers can beat their underlying index over time. Sounds like a good case, Rye, for owning index funds versus actively traded mutual funds. That's right. So you have mutual funds, Bob, which we categorize as old school. They were great to use in the 90s when that was your only option. <laughs> but mm -hmm. now we have what we call the new school, which are exchange traded funds or what you often are called ETFs, right? And an ETF does not have to pay out capital gains every year, which means that you're not paying unnecessary taxes like you are on your mutual funds. So ETFs are new school, mutual funds are old school. So as, as your portfolio goes up, you don't get taxed as you go. You only pay a tax when you decide to sell for a gain. That's a better deal in my book. And, uh, you know, 3% is a big hurdle to overcome. Yeah. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, 
I need a game plan that's based on generating income from my portfolio, from dividends, interest, not the ups and downs of the market. And I have a lot of old school mutual funds in my portfolio. I really need that reviewed because that's the old school. I want the new school. Here's your shot to do it. We still have a couple slots left. If you're one of the next few callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan. And we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic financial review where we look at the whole picture. All you need to do is print off your statements bring them off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. Bob and I are going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where we can look at everything at a bird's eye view and look at all the critical components. We're going to look at things like fees. Yes, you're paying way too much money in those mutual funds, insurance products, annuities. We're going to show you where all the hidden costs in your portfolio are. We're going to look at, can it be more tax efficient? Don't pay unnecessary taxes. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical and more reliable than the ups and downs of the stock market. We're going to show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio to fill in your income gap for retirement. And we're going to look at diversification. Did you get hit hard when the market went down in December? Was your portfolio protected? We're going to show you how to safeguard or bulletproof your your portfolio for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but of course there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with my son, Rye, and we're the pains of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know pinball was once banned in the city? It was in place until 1978. Speaking of pinballs, if you're tired of watching your accounts bounce all over the place, you should keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I, we're simple men, so of course, we want to keep it simple for you. That's why we put together our latest tax guide, to give you the highlights from the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH. That's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, to 555-888. Highlights from the new tax law. Just get up to speed with the new tax reform. Taxes are around the corner. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about me and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Simply go to BeBullish.com. That's BeBullish.com. You can subscribe to the show, get it weekly to your inbox. You can learn a little more about Bob and I's thoughts about the markets. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but check it out for yourself. Go to BeBullish.com. And most weeks you can catch myself and many of our financial advisors on all the major networks. Everything from CNBC, Fox Business News, Yahoo Finance, where we give our most up-to-date thoughts on the markets, on financial planning. And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I answer all our questions to you directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. And we have our producer, Mark Haywood, here to help us answer some of your email questions. What's up, Haywood? Gentlemen, always a pleasure. And I'll tell you, I'm with you, Ryan. This warm weather is not half bad. I mean, it's... I know it's not here to stay. I know it's just tricking us right now. It wants us to (laughs) think it's here to stay, but it's not. It's going to get cold again. Yeah, but you know what, Mark? Pitchers and catchers are reporting any day now, so we're on our way. Oh, Spring yes. Way. Oh, yes. Bob and I were talking off air. I mean, March Madness is coming. The Masters are coming. Baseball is coming back. It's an exciting time of year. 
can feel the excitement in the air. But before any of that, we must get through winter and we must get through some email questions. Let's take one from Roy in Astoria. He's in Queens there. He says, Bob, I'm interviewing and comparing a couple of different financial advisors. What metrics are most important to compare them on? You know, Roy, that's a great question. And I applaud you for interviewing financial advisors because people who work with financial advisors make substantially more money than people that do it on their own. But you know what? There's a big issue with the financial services industry, Rye. What is that issue? Why is there such a lack of service when it comes to the financial services industry? Well, first off, Bob, there's a very low hurdle to become a financial advisor. It's kind of like you have a pulse. Okay, you can be a financial advisor. <laughs> there's no real, real, you know, there's, there's not a real uh, measuring stick to know who's actually a financial advisor for real and who's just selling your products. But why do most financial advisors in the financial services industry fail to deliver service? Well, because it's a very transactional industry by nature, right? I mean, for, for most financial firms are set up to sell you a product and that means the only time they really care about talking to you is when they sell you that product to earn a commission. So above and beyond that, there's not a real fiduciary duty to actually service your account and make sure that they're proactively making sure you're on top of your finances. So would you say the first thing that you want to make sure that the financial advisor you're talking to is a fiduciary, right? Yes. It's a very critical thing. It might sound like fiduciary, not a fiduciary. What the heck does that mean? But the long story short is, Bob, if you're a fiduciary and most advisors are not, that means by law, they have to act in your best interest. That's a very important nuance. So the number one hurdle, Roy, is to have someone who puts your interest first. Second is, you know, Roy, in our industry, you can actually commit some financial crimes and keep your job. How do you find out? How does Roy find out if he's got somebody who's honest that he's interviewing? Well, if you go to the FINRA website, you can look and see, are there any dings on the actual advisor's record, which is important to know because you don't really want to get into business with somebody who maybe has a checkered past, Bob, per se. So you can go Google broker check and you can put the name of the broker in. You can find out what their history is, how long they've been in the industry, if they're a fiduciary, what firm they work for, if they've ever been sued, or if they did any bad things. I mean, that's really a, that's really a great way to start, don't you think, Ryan? It's a great way to start. And one of the things you may want to do on top of that is ask the advisor to talk to one of their clients. You know, we do that all the time just to get a testimonial from somebody else so you can get an idea of what their service is. Um, I mean, obviously, they're probably going to cherry pick somebody that likes their service, but it still doesn't hurt to get the expectations from somebody that they're already doing business with. And then the other thing I would recommend, Roy, is that you sit down with a financial advisor and once they make the recommendation to you on what you should invest in, what the written plan looks like, I should ask to see a copy of the advisor's portfolio and their written plan. You know, there's so many advisors out there that don't eat their own cooking. Well, that's certainly right, Bob. And Roy, we thank you as always for writing in. Let's take a question now from Marty in Princeton. Marty says, I keep talking myself in a circle. I've been out of the market for several years and I've missed out on a lot of growth. I don't want to jump back in now in case we have a crash soon, but I also don't want to stay on the sidelines and miss out on more growth. What's the right answer? Okay, that's a great question. I think there's a lot of us in that same situation right now. And the first off is don't worry about it. And what I mean by that is when you're building a portfolio, don't be concerned about growth because growth only happens once in a while anyway, right? We don't know those magical moments when the market's going to go up. So, you know, Bob, you know, we, you and I talk about when you're younger and you're building your portfolio, you're in what we call the wealth accumulation stage. But when you're getting close to retirement or in retirement looking to live off your portfolio, you're in the wealth distribution phase. And that's really about building a portfolio that's income driven as opposed to growth driven. You know, Ry, this question from Marty just brings a smile to my face. You know, years ago, the Wall Street Journal showed a cartoon of an investor sitting in his easy chair, reading the Wall Street Journal, thinking to himself, do I put all my money in the market and therefore cause it to crash? Or do I sit out on the sidelines and just watch everybody else get rich? You know, what Marty <laughs> thinks is exactly what we all think, right? And, and it's not about it's not about buying low and selling high. That's 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 financial propaganda. It's all about compounding your money, as you say. And the best way to do that is to invest your money in income generating asset classes and always invest in the one that's yielding the most at the time. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, no, and I think that's that's a good point. So we talked about earlier, you gotta remember that forty five percent of your return in the market has nothing to do with the market going up. It's about those mm -hmm. dividends or income that pays out. But I go even further, Bob, if you have a diversified portfolio of money in the market and money in bonds, 
I'm going to say it's more like 50, 60% of your return is going to come from income because with the bonds, that's about 100% of where your return's driven. So, you know, long story short is it's not about capital appreciation. And that's why there's never a bad time to get invested because it's about, again, generating income on your money or what you said, Bob, compounding it over time. You know, there's two things, Marty, you need to do. You need to own bonds that have a fixed rate of return and a maturity date because that way if rates go up, if there's a crash in the bond market that you're afraid of, your money matures and you get to reinvest that money at a higher interest rate. And when it comes to stocks, there are actually companies that are called dividend aristocrats that not only have paid a dividend for 50 years, but have increased that dividend every year for 50 consecutive years. That's a proven winning track record. So, Ra, I think that's great advice for Roy and Marty, but I got to ask you a question. On a scale of one to 10, how financially organized do, do Roy and Marty sound to you? Oh, Bob, I'm going to say a two and a half today, not feeling very benevolent. You just got back from skiing at Jackson Hole. I thought you'd be in a more benevolent mood, right? But I think you're right. I think on a scale of one to 10, they're not very organized. But now let me ask all of you a question. On a scale of one to 10, how financially organized are you right now? How financially organized would you love to be? Wouldn't you all want to be a 10? And if you'd like to be a 10, all you have to do is be one of our next few callers especially if you saved 200000 for retirement because Ryan and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but all you have to do is call or text. And if you do, we'll create your own 360 financial portal. It's a full holistic review, which will update what you own and it'll tell you why you own it in real time anytime you feel like dropping in and looking at how you're doing. We'll take all your goals, all your dreams, and we'll display them on your homepage. And you'll be able to track those goals. You'll be able to see your own report card on how you're tracking towards your goals of retirement or estate planning or income planning. All you have to do is grab all your statements, put them in a folder, stick them in a shopping bag, pick up the phone or text, set up an appointment, and we're going to break your portfolio down to three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, cost, and income. You want to make sure that there's no overlap in your portfolio. There's no ticking time bomb, which will blow up your portfolio in these volatile markets that we've experienced lately. We're going to look at costs. We're going to be certain that you're not being charged these hidden costs, that you're not paying taxes on, on forced capital gains when actively traded mutual funds. We want to reduce those fees so that your income and your total return goes up in your favor. We want to take the money out of your broker's pocket and put it in yours. We want to look at your income. You know, in retirement, we want to stay retired. But even preparing for retirement, we want to make sure that we have a repeatable, dependable income stream that fills that gap that we're all faced with once we retired. And lastly, we're going to create for you your own total financial master plan, which will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over four decades? That's right. For over 40 years, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk, and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. We still have a couple slots left. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, call or text now at 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion just to make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Here's this week's Spotlight, a no pain, no gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And we want to make sure that you have the most up-to-date, common sense advice you can use for your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest guide, highlights from the new tax law, just to get you up to speed with new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's B-U, L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. What you need to know about the new tax law, 
get the new highlights on the tax reform, you can simply download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And now we have a very, very special guest on our show this morning. We have our colleague, Courtney C. Money Dominguez, Certified Financial Planner. Took me a second to get it out this morning. (laughs) Court, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me as always. It's a lot to say, you know, Certified Financial Planner, then Courtney Dominguez. It's a long name, I know. (laughs) And get the C money in there and then you're just like, it's a whole nother level. Well, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. And this is our spotlight segment where, you know, every week we uh, look at an actual real financial plan and talk about just some of the flaws or what we call pain points that our listeners can avoid with their own planning and investing. So why don't you talk a little bit about the case you worked on and how you helped this couple get on their uh, track to financial independence, let's say. Yes. And this is a couple who came to me and they just recently retired. And their big goals is they said, you know, we really want to make sure that A, we're doing the right thing. I want to get a picture of where we are in our financial life. But also, we're worried about another 2008-like event happening, which is on everyone's minds right now. After the last couple of months, the markets have sold off. And they really want to make sure that if something like that happens, that their retirement isn't going to be just off track or detrimental. They're not going to be forced to go back to work. Right. That's probably one of the scariest things when you look to retire is, you know, we say it all the time, but are you going to outlive your money or more importantly, you're going to have a strategy where your money outlives you? Exactly. Yeah. So what we did is we took a look at these couples' investments and we just really mapped out what it looks like and also back tested it to see back in 2008, what would that have looked like? And if that happens again, what kind of risk are they exposed to? So what happened in retrospect, if you put this through the stress test, what did their portfolio actually do back in 2008? So if that happened again, they would have been down about by about a third, which dollar terms mm. for this client, it's over 800,000 that they could see wiped away in a couple of months. Ouch, that hurts. Yes. <laughs> so mm. what they came to us is they really thought that they you know, would kind of get a, yes, you're doing the right thing, maybe there's a few tweaks here or there, but they had no idea that they were taking a significant amount of risk that they don't need to be taking, especially at this stage in the game when they're more income focused, not necessarily growth focused any longer. Yeah, it's a good point because, I mean, there's nothing worse than being in retirement and seeing your portfolio go down by $800,000. And then at the same time, of course, the media is telling you that it's apocalypse now. It's the end of the world. Like, that is not my idea of a very comfortable, relaxing retirement strategy where you have peace of mind, per se. Exactly. And even if I I get this, too, where some people will say, well, I have a high risk tolerance. I'm not going to worry about it. But just as humans, we tend to have a much higher reaction to the markets going down than that same reverse. If the markets were up 30%, we're excited, but not nearly as excited as we were devastated if the markets were down. And you just don't need that kind of stress if you don't need the risk. If I can get you there with much uh, less volatility, why not do that? Yeah. And I think the problem I see is that the bonds that they have aren't really bonds. It's mostly cash and very short-term CDs which net of inflation have a negative return. So they're losing money on what they consider their safe investments. Did they realize that? They did not. Yeah, and this this is somebody who came to us and they, they saw their safe side was in bond funds, but also in things like annuities, mm-hmm. which there is a downside protection there, but what you're foregoing is the excessive fees there and the lack of return that it's gonna give you. So we really had to talk about the excessive fees that they're paying and things like annuities and things like bond funds and that they're not getting as much income that they could get if they had just a more conservative, low cost investment strategy put in place. Yeah, I'm looking at some of these annuities they are paying over 3.63% on the one, like that is a lot of money to be given to that insurance company. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yeah, if you think about that, if the markets go up 5%, but you're having to pay somebody else 3.5%, you're only going to make up, what is that, 1.5%, which is less than inflation. Yeah, it's like a CD rate or even worse than a CD rate right now. Exactly. Yeah. So what we said is, you know what, we don't need all these fancy products. We don't need anything that exciting. We just want to get you from point A to point B. And we can do that with a low cost investment strategy and owning bonds that mature at the end of the day. Yes. And we could boost their income by about $30,000 per year and wow, significantly wow. reduce the volatility. Yeah, I'm looking here, you go to from 50,000 or so in income to over almost 90,000 in income a year. Like that's incredible. And we talk about that. You know, we can generate enough current income where you're not touching principal to fill in that income gap. That's kind of the mat- like the perfect, the sweet spot that you want to be. Exactly. 
And you know, plus, this- you, you know, the, the other thing that's missed is that the liquidity. I mean, you have the ability to liquidate these assets in one day. Municipal bonds are such high quality that you can actually borrow 70% of the value. So if you needed to borrow money for a short period of time, you can do that, where you don't have that type of liquidity in, in things like annuity. So it's you know, not only just a better deal because it's lower cost and higher yield, but more liquidity. And a lot of people don't realize how important liquidity is when you have a financial emergency. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with that more. We want more liquidity, not less liquidity in retirement, especially for this couple who does have an income gap. And if we can feasibly fill that gap with interest and dividends that are going to come into the portfolio, we really don't need to rely so much on what the markets are doing or having to pull from the account, so to speak. Yeah, and that's another good point because those dividends or that income that comes in from the, the stock market side of the portfolio, that's going up over time. So it's not like we have an annuity where you turn it on, you get the same amount of income every year. The reality of it is it's, this is an increasing cash flow investment. And we talk about that in retirement. As inflation goes up, your cost of living goes up, you need your income to adjust with that. And a lot of these insurance products don't address that issue. Exactly. Well, I have to say this is another financial masterpiece. Miss C Money Dominguez. Great job, Courtney. Thanks for having me. Um, if you're thinking to yourself right now, this is the kind of review that I need. I need to know about the excessive fees that I'm paying. I need to figure out how can I optimize my income in retirement, or do I have type of income investments that lack liquidity where I can't get to my principal. Very, very important things to think about. Here's your shot to get a review just like this. We still have a couple slots left. If you give us a call right now and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself, Bob, and Courtney C. Money Dominguez will run for you our total financial master plan just like this. We'll do it with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review. All you need to do is print those statements off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them into the office. We're going to build you your own personalized financial portal, and we're going to run the same analysis. Again, we're going to look at fees. We're going to see, do you have high cost annuities? We're paying over 3% a year, which is a lot of money. We're going to show you how to reduce cost on your portfolio. We're going to look at income. We're able to increase the income on this portfolio by over $30,000 a year. Can we help you increase the income on your portfolio to fill in that income gap? And we're going to look at diversification. This couple would have lost $800,000 in a down market. There's no protection there. Is your portfolio protected? We're going to show you how to safeguard your portfolio. And then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine that most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you need to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, don't miss out. If you've saved over 200000 for retirement, we'll run for you your own total financial master plan. There's no obligation and there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Well, great show. See money Courtney Dominguez. It's magical to have you on the show. <laughs> it's always a pleasure, you guys. Big Bob, what's the agenda for the rest of the uh, afternoon? Relaxing by the Getting pool, going it. to the jacuzzi? No, nah, I'm... Big week in Bluebell this week, right? We're back, uh, I'm back in the saddle in Bluebell for the week and uh, getting ready for a lot of meetings. I like it, Bob. Music to my ears when I hear that you're actually working. <laughs> 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 well, have a great weekend. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.